Hi everybody, welcome to the Sublime Soiree. We are so excited this month to begin our conversation about the Sublime Soiree element of food. Mm. And we're going to be doing that with a very special friend. We want to introduce to you Heather Weissel. She's the founder of Soul, Mind and Strength Coaching, a holistic and wellness coaching company that you can find online. She's a registered dietitian and received her Master's of Arts and Religion from Trinity College. Enjoy the interview. created food? Well, I think in order to answer that question, we have to go back to the beginning of time. But before we do that, I want to kind of paint a picture of where we are as Americans right now in 2022. And so in order to do that, I want to pull a couple statistics and share. One out of every two American adults has a chronic health condition. Four out of the top 10 causes of death in America are diet related. Mm -hmm. And research shows that upwards of 80% of adults are not thriving mentally. That means they have high levels of stress and they feel a lack of meaning and purpose in their lives. Mm -hmm. Those are significant mm -hmm. and those are staggering. And so at best, we're not thriving. And at worst, we're not, we're shortening our side this time of eternity in order to live out what God has planned for us, right? So my goal as a dietitian and Christian is to help people close that gap between disease and living unwell and truly thriving. Mm. So I ask the question, does God have a different plan for us than this? And I think he does. And I think in order to answer that, we have to go back and look at how he created food and look at the beginning of time. And so one of the best things that I like to describe that as is in terms of a Hebrew word. And that word is shalom. Mm -hmm. And you might've heard that word before and thought, oh, that means peace. But it actually means a lot more than just peace. It means universal flourishing, wholeness, Cornelius Plantigna, um, a theologian, he says, the webbing together of God, humans, and creation, injustice, fulfillment, and delight. What a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. And so he gives us that word. He gives us that opportunity in the garden when he created the world. And so if we're going to flourish, if we're going to thrive in wholeness, that means, as I would imagine, that he wants us to flourish in every area of our lives. So <clears throat> what are some of the first gifts that God gave to Adam and Eve? Well, he gave them work, he gave them food, and he gave them rest. And he gave those good gifts before the fall. Mm -hmm. So we know they were meant for good. Right. Right. The fall just distorted them. And so work, well, he said, create and cultivate the earth food. He said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the earth. He gave them all the nuts and berries and seeds in the garden. Yeah. They're yours. And then he gave them the example of rest because God wasn't physically tired on the seventh day, but he gave them that example that he needed rest that he didn't, but they would need that because he knows that they would. And so he also gave them a relationship with each other and then with God. And so he modeled what they would need for nourishment and to flourish. And I call that the first wellness prescription, essentially, because he knew what we'd need. And so that well-being wheel, um, I that's on my website. Um, it and I can put a picture of it up. But that well-being wheel does exactly that. Like it 
shows those areas of our primary nourishment, which are our relationships. I use the acronym PROMS, physical health, um, moving and food, relationships, our relationships, occupational well-being. Well, he gave them work and he called it good. Mm -hmm. um, mental capacities, mental well-being. If any of you have ever struggled or known somebody that struggled with depression or anxiety, you know that can be a very crippling piece of well-being. Mm -hmm. And so then the S is the spiritual. And so he gave us all of those relate, he gave us all of those aspects of well being right there in the garden. Mm -hmm. And then that inner circle, which is the food. And so um, we definitely need all of those to survive and to thrive, to not just survive, mm -hmm. but to truly thrive, to move toward flourishing. So um, the second piece of that is that, isn't it interesting that Satan shows food? to create the first deception. Mm -hmm. So God gave us that good gift. And then that same good food in the form of a sweet apple was Satan's tool of choice to plant a seed of doubt in Eve's mind that said, was God's good gift good enough? I mean, is God's character? Does God really have your well-being in mind? And is what are his intentions? Maybe his intentions really aren't for you to flourish. That was Satan's whole point um, with the apple. Was Eve eating it out of physical hunger? No, she wasn't physically hungry. She truly bought into the lie that she was missing out on something. And so that is where we live today, right? And I'm going to read the sentence that I wrote in my Bible study um, because I think it captures it so perfectly. Every one of us must answer the question, how will we handle this good, potentially distorted, often disastrous, necessary for survival gift of food? Mm. So yes, we live in the brokenness today, but we also, as Christ followers, have the opportunity to restore this area of our lives and to restore that good gift of food that he gave us and to use it as appropriately as he meant for it to be as nourishment in order to do the works that he prepared in advance for us to do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think often of, um, and these are probably verses that I learned along my own fitness journey, two verses that jump to mind. And one is, um, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who's in you? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. And I think of that often when I'm thinking of what to put into my mouth. Not that, not that that's a legalistic approach, but that by nourishing my body, I'm, I, as far as it depends on me, I'm taking care of his temple. Absolutely. And it Every, helps me then to live out the abundance that he wants us to live. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I had a friend um, from seminary that passed away at 47 of a heart attack. How mm -hmm. tragic and preventable. Right. So, so sad because he didn't get to live the rest of his years flourishing and doing what he loved to do. His, his life was cut short, premature death. And that's mm -hmm. one of the effects, of course, of the fall ultimately mm -hmm. is death. And so mm -hmm. if we can move toward, not just away from disease, but move toward flourishing, mm -hmm. then we will live out that abundance that, that he calls us to. And it's not, mm -hmm. these aren't legalistic things. These are not, our salvation mm -hmm. doesn't depend on these. Right. These are because we have been saved, we've been saved to do these other things. Mm -hmm. And so that's a piece of the thriving. I think that um, when I share that statistic earlier about 80% of Americans lack meaning and purpose in their life. Mm -hmm. And I think um, an iceberg is a good example of that because an iceberg, like your choices, your behaviors and habits, those are the top of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. 
But really, those behaviors and habits are driven by a huge amount of thought and brain activity Mm -hmm. and all of those things that go on at a much deeper level. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, I mean, we're grabbing food in autopilot Mm -hmm. simply because it's the clock tells us it's time to eat or for all these reasons other than true physical hunger. And so if we can get, if I can help clients get to the bottom of the iceberg and the bottom of the iceberg being your purpose, your sense of value, what, where your meaning comes from in life and what you enjoy doing. Those are the things that help people thrive. And those are the things that influence, completely influence our behaviors Mm -hmm. and habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Your passion for people to have freedom over food addiction has become a ministry. Can you tell us a little bit about your ministry? Yeah, so my ministry is Soul, Mind, and Strength. I have a website, soulmindandstrength.com. And so I help people do exactly that, move away from disease and toward flourishing. And the, one of the main things that I do that through is nutrition because my background is as a dietitian. And so um, I work with people kind of creating a sustainable food rhythm that helps them to thrive. Sweet. And what are the different ways that you do that? Um, Yeah. So one of those areas is, um, by using anti-inflammatory nutrition. And I work with a lot of people from a personal experience. Um, my daughter was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis at age 13 and through COVID was home from college and came to me and said, well, mom, I'd been asking her for a long time. Um, Are you interested in trying out some dabbling in some anti-inflammatory nutrition just to see if that would help? She was on three medications at the time, an NSAID, um, uh, anti-chemo drug, or a drug for chemotherapy, and a biologic, which are three really heavy drugs. And um, she said, I'm still having pain on a daily basis. And I would ask the rheumatologists, every rheumatologist that I would see, um, I would say, do you believe the statistic that 70% of your immune system resides in your gut? And they all said, yes. And I said, then there has to be something nutritionally that we can do to improve the inflammation, improve Grace's inflammation, and um, also decrease these meds that she's on. And so, um, I would say, do you have any thoughts on that? And I didn't get, I didn't get many answers. Mm -hmm. We know as a dietitian, it was one of the most frustrating and humbling things for me as a mom and a dietitian, because I could help people who have celiac disease get well by taking Mm -hmm. out gluten. I could help people with diabetes feel better by balancing their blood sugars, but I couldn't help my own daughter. And so when we embarked on this journey of anti-inflammatory nutrition, it was really, really exciting to see her completely improve in her joint pain, her headaches, her gut pain, all of those things that go along with inflammation, Mm -hmm. um, she improved on via nutrition. So, and since I've had the opportunity to help a lot of other people with autoimmune diseases, experience that same, um, reduction in their pain. That's great. That's great. And so how can people get in touch with you too? In terms yeah, of- so you can get in touch with me by going to my website, www.soulmindandstrength.com. Uh, just like the verse, love the Lord, your God with our, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, so if you remember the great Shema, um, that will hopefully help you remember the, that long name. Um, but yes, you can contact me through my website and I'd love to have you follow me on Instagram. Any other insights you would like to share with us today as we close out this time with you? Yeah. So I love the, 
the example of, that God gives us of food in the Bible. He weaves it throughout his entire story from the beginning um, where we see the good gift of food given to the distortion of it and from the fall. And then we see Jesus actually share that example of a Passover meal with his friends before his death and tells us to continue that tradition with the Lord's Supper. And then we have this beautiful picture illustrated in Revelation of the one day, the one day um, on the redeemed earth, having this beautiful supper with all of his people and Jesus. And so we know that food is going to be a part of the redeemed earth. Mm -hmm. And yes. so we can pull that. That's the piece that we're living in is the, in the already, but not yet, mm -hmm. because we've, we're living after Christ, we can help restore that food piece right here in our, in our cultures. And it starts with us in our own relationship with food. And then of course, cultivating, you know, the, the one thing about Shalom that I didn't mention before is that it's universal flourishing for our good, for others' good in his glory. So it has to meet all three of those criteria. We can't eat food that's good for us, but yet oppresses somebody else. Mm -hmm. that, that's not shalom. Right. But that's a good point. the idea of shalom is that we are flourishing as uh, is everything, the creation, everything. And so I love that picture because I just see food is a beautiful piece of the connection because food is a social piece. We all see that we connect a lot over food mm -hmm. as a culture, um, but yet God gave it to us as sustainable nourishment too. I mean, we can only live 40 or so days without food right. until we die. And so it is essential for us. It's that we depend on it. And so it's up to us to start with our own relationship of, with food, and then to bring that flourishing to those around us. And, and, and food is a part of that. Absolutely. Wow. That totally speaks our language. For right. Sure. It really does. <laughs> it really does. So grateful because as we are continuing to unwrap the elements of a sublime soiree, Food and gathering is one of those elements. So you've just added so much insight to even what we've been researching. And as we get excited and look forward to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Um, and the whole thing that you were talking about too of, of this beautiful hope that we have to look forward to. The moments that we can be enjoying right now in our mm -hmm. walk. And I love and invite others in. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's exactly our heartbeat. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. Yeah, absolutely. When we're, we love to um, feature different ministries and invite people to, to go check them mm -hmm. out too. So we would love to be able to pass along your ministry to everybody. Who thank you. To our website. So thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed our interview with Heather Weissel. Remember that you can find her at soulmindandstrength.com and also on Instagram by the same name. And friends, stay tuned this entire month as we continue to unpack the element of food. In the meantime, we pray that your week is sublime and that you do live free above the fray. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.